Hi everyone, it's Emily, and today I'll be unboxing my most highly anticipated figure pre-order of the year. And that is of Nia from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And she's in this form, which I won't say too much because that does broach a little bit into spoiler territory. But uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, it's one of my favorite JRPG franchises, and I just love the second entry so much. And Mia happens to be my favorite character from the second game. And all the choices they made when it came to the sculpts and the paint uh, just really made me very excited to, uh, to order this figure. So I managed to get my pre-order in kind of the last second on the Good Smile Global website. So this is a little bit different from Good Smile US, um, but and it ships internationally from Japan. And what's really nice about the global website versus the US or other shops is that they have a flat 2000 yen shipping rate. So um, with this being a rather large box, um, it's very happy to only have to pay under $20 for shipping. But because it is directly from Good Smile, I don't think there was a discount on the base price of the figure, which is fine. So first I'm gonna take you through a full unboxing of her figure straight out of the box, and then transition into some commentary about um, kind of my thoughts regarding her figure overall while looking over some close-ups and b-roll footage. And then at the end, I'll share what she looks like on my shelf along with my other Xenoblade Chronicles figures. So let's take her out of the box. So I just have this extra piece of cardboard protection. So when you use a box cutter, you won't accidentally cut into the figure box. And it is a nice tight fit. So I'm going to gently out like so and here is what her box looks like um so this is i want to say pretty big i think it might be a little bit i can't tell if it's larger than pyro mithra's box or slightly smaller i do have those boxes somewhere i can compare shots and then this is what the art inspiration is and the tape Her instructions here. Take out her extra packaging. Inside the box has that little kind of cube, little pattern. And here she is. So get the additional tape off from the sides here. this uh, rather plain base um, that was shown and it's um, the same shape as her core crystal so I guess that was the intent Let's get all her little plastic things off I might have to remove her head for this one but some initial close-ups and uh, she's so pretty. And then this is her blade. And let's see what's on the lower blister page.
looks like one of her twin tails. Um, nicely protected. and it does look like there are support poles for her hair uh, pieces and they're just um, excluding those support rods there are five pieces and it looks pretty simple to construct so I'm gonna attempt that with first putting her on the base Oops, so she slides on there pretty easily um, and I wouldn't say she's super supported, but maybe the support rods will kind of help that. The next with the twin tails. So the way to, I guess, figure out which one's left and right is just by the uh, curling pieces. So I'll first find PC and PC is going to go on her um, right side uh, or rather our left. Attaches, yeah, in the back here. So this does rub rather close to her sleeve here. So I'm going to take one of these plastic pieces just to make sure I don't accidentally have some paint transfer. I'm trying to fit this in. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to do this off camera. All right. So after finessing them in, they are. Finally secured in there, and she is quite wobbly. But here's a look at the connection there. So she definitely needs those supporting rods. Um, but before that, I will put her um, sword in. Or also has her um, hand attached as well. And it has the same sort of little nodular attachment. wasn't too bad. So yeah, she is very impressive and I will have um, a turning table uh, to share what she looks like. So here's a closer look at Nia spinning around here and she's really massive. She is a one seventh scale, but with her blade and how large her hair is, she takes up a lot of space. But overall, I think Good Smile did a really fantastic job with Nia's figure, like they did with the previous Xenoblade Chronicles figures. Pearlescent white, I think, really stands out, and it's a similar sheen as what they used for Melia and Cosmos's figures. And regarding her hair, gray could sometimes be, I think, a little bit difficult to kind of show dimension, um, especially this sort of I don't want to say ashy gray, but um, it's kind of brownish gray that uh, Nia has. But I think they added a lot of good dimension, especially with how they sculpted the twin tails and also using that uh, shiny kind of glossy paint to give it a little bit more dimension and a texture to it. And I do like the little bow details, both on her outfit and on her twin tails. Um, I think those are sculpted really well and they do really pop. Um, and just add a little bit extra to the figure. And just looking over all the paint details, I didn't notice any defects, which I was really happy about. So I think the paint that they did just throughout the figure was really great quality. I do kind of miss maybe the sheen in her eyes. Um, they used more of a matte finish, so it wasn't quite as glossy as everything else. But overall, I do like her expression, and I think they captured Nia quite well. Um, it's not quite as cheeky as she was maybe early in the game, but this more sort of mature but playful smile we have here. And with her outfit, I just love all the layers and folds and just how intricate the sleeve details are, as well as, I guess, um, the back kind of coattails, um, if you'd call them that. 
And there's some rather interesting folding details on her uh, leggings there, if you could call them that. And her shoes are just so pointy. Uh, there's actually quite a few different areas that I think the instructions had a little caution signs saying that these are sharp and to be careful. But I do really like how playful all the proportions are for this figure. Uh, Nia is quite small and there's just so many elements to her outfit and also her hair that are just larger than life, um, which I think is just kind of a fun contrast. Now there was, I think, a slight imperfection in my Nia, and that is around her core crystal. It does look like there was maybe some leftover glue or something that kind of slid uh, to the side. Um, so it has that maybe kind of shiny finish on her skin, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, you don't really notice it unless you're looking up really close. So you just have a few other subtle details that I think are kind of hidden unless you're really looking at her figure closely. Her skin is really light, so you really can't see much contrast between the white lines on her face against her skin color. And in the game, she has a lot of different uh, blue or tealish circles on her body, especially around her legs. And you kind of just see them hidden up on her hips. Um, if you're kind of uh, looking around uh, her uh, sleeve kind of coat dress shirt thing. So I'm glad that they're there, though they do look a little odd. Um, kind of placed like that um, and with the rest of them being covered up. Now when it comes to the blade or the weapon that she's holding, um, it's supposed to be kind of this water elemental thing and I think the translucent uh, clear plastic that they chose does convey that well. It does seem a little less maybe intense than it was pictured or depicted in the game, which is understandable, but it is still rather large. And I think there might be some difficulty with folks trying to fit her on a shelf or in a detolf, uh, just because of uh, how massive she is and how tall that blade kind of does reach. But I'm really pleased with how she turned out. I think she looks exactly like the prototype, um, if not better in person, especially just with how glossy she is and the sense of scale. Uh, and so I will have her up on the shelf uh, so you guys could see what she looks like next to all the other Xenoblade girls. So this is what my Xenoblade Chronicles shelf looked like before adding Nia. Um, and here is the after where I had to rearrange a few things so that she would fit well um, centered on the shelf. So I do have the two acrylic support rods that were included in the package. I just uh, didn't see them when I first unboxed her figure. Um, and the back there holding up her twin tails. Uh, they were kind of awkward to fit and I'm not totally sure if I have them uh, correct but with this two supports on, it does help stabilize the figure a lot. So I don't have to worry too much about leaning for now, but I guess time will tell. And as I mentioned earlier, her blade is massive. As you can see, it reaches all the way up to the top of the Xenoblade Chronicles Collector's Edition box sets. And it just wraps right over uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 there. So that should hopefully give a sense of scale of how much room she takes up um, if you own that collector's box. But I'm just so happy that Mia is finally here and taking uh, center stage on my shelf. And she really does complete this Xenoblade Chronicles shrine that I've been putting together. So I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing of Mia's figure from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And honestly, I think I'm just going to have to move my Zelda stuff onto another shelf and just make that entire level just dedicated to uh, the Xeno franchise. So if we ever get a Xeno Saga or Xeno Gears port or remaster of some sort, and they make figures for that. Um, it'd be nice to have that kind of dedicated top layer as sort of a Xeno shrine of sorts. But my big wish when it comes to additional figures for the Xenoblade Chronicles games is to get one of uh, Uni from Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, that's the one I'm really hoping for, but I would be happy with basically anyone from a third game, or if they want to, they could also maybe make Shulk or Rex or um, one of the male characters from any of the games, um, I'll probably buy that up as well. I think the demand is definitely there for more Xenoblade Chronicles figures, so we'll have to see if Nintendo and Good Smile want to make more. In terms of figures, I am expecting Crow from the Legend of Heroes Trail series to arrive later this month. And then I think Renee is coming in August. 
So I'm gonna have a little bit of a gap. I'm not sure if Crow's gonna get his own unboxing video, but we'll have to see what I have time for. But the next few videos I have planned on my channel um, are gonna be a mix of collaborations and um, some videos focusing on collecting um, with hopefully the first one talking about um, how I go about reducing the size of my collection so that it uh, continues to stay curated. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that and uh, more that I have in the works. And until my next video, bye guys.